Hi and welcome to the third session of the evidence-based practice. I am Professor Arunachalam here. We are going to deal with uh, formulating an answerable question and this is Sairam Academy for you. If you have not watched the last two sessions, which is very important uh, for you to have a comprehension of the current session, please go to the link. I have provided the link for uh, those two sessions. The first session was what is evidence-based practice and how to do a evidence-based practice. It has six steps. In the first presentation, we just had an overlook of all the six steps. In the second session, we discussed what are all the sources of research problem, uh, where uh, the research problems are embedded and how to collect this research problem for a researcher and in the third session we are going to see how this research problem is going to be converted into an answerable question which is more uh, in the research language. Now once you come to know what is the research problem is you have to come up with a research question so that is entirely different uh, uh, in uh, nomenclature but both of them are somewhat similar and interdependent. So research problem is the one which you have already identified and uh, to put that in a proper sentence you have to frame a research question. This research question can be formed systematically as following. First you have to ask certain questions like who, what, where, how, why, when all these questions you have to come up because your research problem may have a very simple solution or it may have a very complicated answer or you, it may not have an answer at all but if you systematically approach your research problem only you will come to know what is the next step to go ahead with so we will take this as our uh, uh, problem now the research problem is will virtual reality training improve hand function among stroke subjects Okay, will virtual reality, a technology which is recently coming up, will improve the hand function among stroke patients? This is our problem. So, we don't know the answer for this and we are going to systematically frame our research question. So, now before going into all these things, I should know first what is virtual reality, then I should know what is stroke then I should know what is the disability that is associated with stroke, what is the load of hand function disability in stroke patients, um, the current therapy which are given for hand function uh, improvement. So all these uh, things which are surrounding this research question, this knowledge should be gained first of all before going into the uh, sequential steps because without knowing this it is very tough for you. So these things can be uh, learn from a bookish knowledge or you can get it from a lecture classes or you can go to uh, some uh, uh, articles which are uh, um, uh, explaining these scenarios and what is virtual reality so far have achieved in the field of stroke rehabilitation all these things you should know first of all the basic knowledge and the background knowledge should be there before you're going into this particular research topic. I see many students coming and asking me, sir, stroke low topic, sir. Give me a topic in stroke. Give me a topic in low back pain. Uh, sir, I have decided to do something on uh, osteoarthritis, sir. So if you ask them what you're going to do, they will say, no, sir, I, I want to do something on osteoarthritis. That's what I know. But this is not the preparatory level from a student level. Your guide may not help you. Even God cannot help you. So you should have an in-depth knowledge about what you are going to do and you have you should have a thorough knowledge about the background and the basics of what you are selected to do. Got it? So now we have a model called PICO model. So this PICO model is used to uh, segregate your research question into four different aspects as follows. P stands for patient and problem. What sort of patients you are going to deal with and what is the problem? If there is no patients, there might be a scenario or a problem with which you are going to deal. So that will be P. I is the intervention or a management which you are going to uh, give to the patients. And C is the comparison 
with which you are going to find the efficacy of this intervention. Um, so it may you may compare with the existing gold standards or you may be comparing with a control group or you may co compare with a placebo group or whatever it is with which you are comparing your intervention and saying my intervention is better than this particular thing is called as C. So that comparing quotient is called as C. And O is the outcome. So what you expect out of your intervention, what you uh, um, are trying to do with uh, the patient by giving this intervention is called as O. So this may uh, may not explain you sufficiently. If I go with an example, I think you will be able to uh, know what it is. So when I it comes to patient or problem, uh, description of the patients or the target disorder of interest. So here what uh, we have taken an example uh, we are going to do on stroke subjects. So P becomes stroke. So remember our uh, uh, question. So stroke is our P. So the intervention. So what we are going to give uh, intervention here is the virtual reality. So I is the virtual reality which is what I am trying to find whether it is effective or not. Comparison C comparison is task specific exercise protocol which is being uh, widely used now that is the uh, approved uh, protocol just for namesake I am saying task specific exercise protocol with that only I am going to compare virtual reality and find out whether it is effective or not and what I am going to improve in these stroke patients I expect the hand function to improve so PICO model is very clear now what we are going to deal with uh, what is the subject we are going to deal with is P. What is the uh, intervention for which the efficacy is going to be found is called as I. With which you are going to compare is called as C. And what outcome you expect from this intervention is called as O. So PICO. So, uh, now, what are the different types of questions you may get? You can ca classify the questions. First is harm or exposure. That means uh, an example I am giving you. When a patient performs forward bending, will it influence his back pain or not? Giving forward bending exercises will expose a patient to low back pain or not. That is one sort of exercise uh, research uh, you may come across. Diagnostic or assessment research that is uh, coming up with uh, the, uh, for example, a painful arc syndrome whether a painful arc syndrome is a very sensitive uh, scenario in supraspinatus tendonitis or not. So when you are going with some research like that uh, which uh, helps you in improving your assessment and diagnosis part of uh, physical therapy that is called as diagnosis uh, that, that is uh, categorized as diagnosis and assessment type of uh, question. Then therapy as usual we know a lot of we, we always used to give therapy uh, even at the level of BPT or MPT we are always sticking to that particular pattern of uh, 30 in A group 30 in B group pre-test and post-test and finding the efficacy without testing the uh, hypothesis we say our uh, intervention is very effective uh, that is the current scenario okay uh, just leave out that coming to the subject so therapy is finding out uh, a particular uh, intervention or a modality is whether it is effective or not. Prognosis. So this is what is lacking in Indian society. We never see uh, whether the uh, uh, improvement which is gained over a period of time uh, is sustained or not on a long run or a short run or whatever it is. So more prognostic studies are needed. So um, giving an intervention and finding it after four weeks whether it's effective or not will not solve the problem of the patient. Whether it sustains for another six months or three months or one year or whatever it is will help you give an understanding about how is the sustainability of the improvement provided by that particular uh, intervention. If only it has a sustainability then you can say that that equipment is uh, sorry that intervention is valid and uh, effective. And fifth thing is finding the causal effect uh, etiology finding out uh, whether a patient with such symptoms or uh, smoking habits 
will result in tuberculosis or uh, taking up tuberculosis patient and uh, finding whether he is having uh, the habits of smoking or other tobacco chewing uh, habits and saying that tobacco or uh, smoking is the main etiology for uh, tuberculosis this is um, finding the etiological factors so your research question most probably will fall into any of these five categories whether you will be trying out to find whether this uh, intervention is harmful or not or you are going to find some assessment uh, tool whether it is effective or not you are going to find an F therapy whether it is effective or not uh, then you are going to find the long term or short term prognosis of a therapy or you are going to find the etiology for some issues fine these are the different types of uh, questions which you may come across based upon this question only you are going to go with your study design whether you are going to adopt an RCT to find the effect of a intervention or a systematic review or a meta-analysis to find the scenario, current scenario or past scenario, how things have evolved. Uh, you are going to go with a prospective study to find the long term uh, effect of a patient, retrospective uh, study uh, to find the causal relationship uh, that is for uh, finding out the etiology uh, or to find a scenario, cross-sectional study to correlate certain scenarios or a case study when you find some peculiar cases or a peculiar uh, behavior in certain cases or uh, a, a peculiar intervention or a very novel intervention you have used on certain regular patients. So based upon your research question only your research study uh, your study methodology is going to be framed. So uh, this is what I am trying to uh, tell in this presentation. You cannot just like that select a methodology you should know what your research question demands based upon that only you can come up with a study methodology so with that uh, this presentation is so dear friends tomorrow is a big day tomorrow is Tamil New Year and Hari Om sir is coming on zoom for an interview an interactive interview a casual and personal interview you're going to see the serious side and the casual side of uh, Hari Om sir uh, thank you for Hari Om sir uh, and he accepted it uh, gleefully when we came up with this idea I don't think uh, a physiotherapist have interviewed a physiotherapist in any format so far if uh, uh, to my knowledge uh, that will be very uh, knowledge sharing process with uh, Hari Om sir tomorrow and also some uh, general topics and uh, casual questions to him. Hoping for tomorrow's session. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow. Happy Tamil New Year.